Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habit a question was asked. I'm a 25 year old Salafi Muslim brother in Northern California looking to get married. And I'm intimidated and not attracted to educated modern Western Muslim women. I'm only attracted to simple, more conservative, hijab wearing religious Muslims. Kind of like in between a housewife and someone who holds a normous off, normal office job, but not someone who's like a doctor, engineer, or dentist, or something. The women I am running into are the total opposite. They have PhDs in engineering, medicine, don't wear hijab, but some do. Seem like they all want all they want to do is protest in front of City Hall and are looking for someone similar. Like they give me the vibe that they only have really high expectations and would 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 have to work like a rat and I would have to work at a rat in the rat race just to be complete uh, just to compete with my own wife I am a simple guy despite having grown up in the West and I tend to be more conservative myself I don't like the modernist femi feminist vibe I get from the bulk of women I am running to running into here in the US and it really is putting me off and is not attractive However, I can't seem to find the more modest conservative women that just want to get married rather than cash in on a high earning husband who will keep working his cubicle job until 65 and drop dead in the office. I thought of resolving the issue by going back home to my parents native country to get married which is an Arab country but I'm afraid I will just end up getting used for my visa passport and the girl will split. Uh, which happens a lot, so I have decided to play it safe by looking here in the USA. Also, the girls back home are much harder for me to read and assess. They may come off as religious, etc., but they can be completely crazy when they arrive in the West. I've seen this happen. Uh, confused. Any advice, Brother Khalid? I, should I just plunge and accept a non-hijab or hijab-wearing feminist who has a degree in medicine, engineering, and wants to keep buying a bigger house every two years. I don't mean to generalize Muslim women in the US and paint them all with the same brush, but I'd say 90% of the ones I've run into seem to be like that. It has gotten so bad I'm even thinking about driving down to LA and going to Brother Farid Abdullah's Masjid in LA, Masjid al Mu'min, and seeing if they can find me a non-feminist, ideally Salafi wife who is seeking a husband, Jazakallah Khairan. Or should I put off marriage altogether until I'm 30 or something? <clears throat> First of all, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our affairs easy and good. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And there are so many questions regarding marriage from our brothers and sisters. There are many sisters that are looking for good husbands and many brothers that are looking for good wives. But unfortunately, it's not always easy to make the connections between the two. Uh, this is a very long issue, but I think we can look at it uh, and sum it up in a few ways. For one, it, that it's difficult to find uh, a suitable spouse that fits your criterion as mo many of the women that you are meeting uh, and having sit downs with or what have you tend to be uh, very highly educated and uh, more concerned about this life and worldly things, being very materialistic <coughs> and wanting to be outside of the home and really it sounds in general probably not Salafi in their uh, orientation and the second option you have is to go back to your home country uh, and again you don't have that connection on the ground to be able to uh, do that with uh, and find a suitable uh, sister. So this also is a challenge because as we know that from many, uh, unfortunately, many countries that what happens uh, sometimes is that brothers marry sisters from overseas and especially particular countries which we'll not name as not to uh, insult our sisters and brothers from those particular countries. But there tends to be a trend in certain countries that uh, sisters married from back home or in from those particular countries they come to America and they abandon their husbands and we have many 
uh, scenarios. I know personally of many scenarios similar to this. The sisters come, they just wanted a green card or they get the delights of the dunya and they leave off, leave those brothers <clears throat> in order to sponsor their families or whatever and those other nightmares that come from that, especially when there are children involved. So these are very serious issues to be concerned with and you are already aware of those issues as you've explained in detail. In general, my advice I'd say, as you mentioned, uh, Sheikh Farid Abdullah in Masjid al-Mu'min is a good place to start. That you need to make connections with the brothers and uh, uh, imams and students of knowledge from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and that sounds like a good place to start. As I'm not really that familiar uh, with what's going on in California because I haven't been there in so long. And unfortunately, I've been on this side of the world, so I haven't really been in touch uh, on the ground with what's going on in America as much. <clears throat> and so I think that's an excellent place to start because you want to be in the, uh, a connection with people who are like-minded. And like-minded meaning that they are on the same methodology as you. Because if you marry a sister that is already very independent and she is different than you, then the chances are she's not going to, uh, that you're not going to be able to come together on a similar, uh, in, in, in matters of similarity, whether that be in uh, issues, could be even issues of deen, and issues of creed, issues of madhab or, or methodology of how to understand the religion. That if she is very secular in her approach, or she is very uh, worldly and materialistic, that she may not come in to uh, uh, be compatible with you. And this can be a lot of problems in the future. And I've known situation scenarios recently, uh, a beloved brother to me, he married a Salafi sister, Walila al-Hamd, and she turned out to be very materialistic. And this is something he perhaps should have seen prior, beforehand, before the marriage. And it turned to be a disaster and children being involved. And this uh, because of not checking ahead of time and understanding the importance of finding that compatibility. So I think it's very important for a young man and a young woman that, or an old man or an old woman, uh, anyone who is getting into, uh, who's going to marry, that they should be very uh, clear about what they're looking for and the goals that they're trying to achieve and likewise to see where their partner is. If their partner is a yes person, yeah, 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 this can also be a red flag as well. So just to be aware of that, that you need to find someone who is evenly compatible. Do not forget that, as the ulama mentioned, that relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making effort and then putting your trust solely with Allah. So don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this whole process. That you may be asking for advice from your brother and hopefully I can give beneficial advice. But don't forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nahar wa layl in the a day and in the night. Going back to Allah because that's where it's going to come from. That's where the best result, that is where the result will come from. From Allah azza wa jal. And that is where the assistance and the refuge and the support comes from. If you seek help, seek it from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's going to come from Allah. So do not forget first and foremost to seek refuge and seek support and isti'ana uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking him. Begging him, making a sakhara before you make a decision with a sister. Number two, make sure you're in the right company. If you are already out there with sisters, you're in a realm in which you are already kind of in that feminist and, 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 and sisters that are very independent, that are putting their profession above perhaps even marriage above even their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're already in the wrong circle and the wrong sphere. You need to be with those who are, who are 
putting forth the criterion, those things that you are looking for, and that is the deen. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ advised when he talked about that women are, are married for four, and one of them criterion, of course, is their beauty, and their status, or their manzil, and, <coughs> and their, uh, their wealth, and also their deen, and the one who marries for the deen is the one who's going to be uh, the most satisfied and is going to have the, the best result. So it's very important to look for that criterion of religion, not meaning you compromise the other things, that if you need someone, she needs to be someone on your professional level, if that's important to you, then there's no reason to compromise that as well, that you're looking for her with good deen, but you also want her to have, you know, maybe a certain level. Maybe you want her to be college educated because you are a highly educated person. There's nothing wrong with that. However, you just want to make sure that that doesn't come at the expense of the religion. So sometimes it's hard to find <coughs> all of those criterion. Likewise, I would say, which is very important for, for all people, not just in the West, but especially in the West, because we're bombarded uh, with all these, uh, what the beautiful woman should look like, and likewise, what the beautiful man and the strong man should look like, or the handsome man should look like, and all this stuff, that it should be someone appealing to you because you are, this is going to be your spouse, bidden in love for the rest of your life. So they should, there should be attraction there too. So she, she should have good religion and attraction. Not just that, mashallah, she is good deen, because sometimes, unfortunately, that is is not always sufficient. You might, she may have good religion, she may pray, and she may be on the sunnah, but you're just plain and simple not attractive. That's not going to, a lot of times, unfortunately, last in the long term. You need a, a variety of characteristics, and I think you have to, as an individual, look at that and determine what are those things that are important to you. If you're an extremely physical person, you're an extremely affectionate person, you're an extremely uh, person who likes uh, that uh, uh, the beauty and and so so on and so forth. Then that's got to be in your criterion because eventually that can be a problem for you. So you need to have that balance of what you're looking for and not to compromise. So I hope that that in general is helping. And I don't advise settling uh, because you don't want to, especially if this is your first marriage. You don't want to just marry. You're a young man. <clears throat> And you marry a sister and then you have a child and then it's a disaster and it falls apart immediately. Or you just don't need that. You don't need to collect sisters, so to speak. And you don't need to have divorces on your record as well. So you want to go into it very strong uh, with the goal of, uh, of being this being your spouse. So I don't advise compromise at all. And there's nothing wrong with if that... It's necessary for you to go home and go overseas. You're just going to have to really check and look at the signs as best as you can because you never know uh, what that person is looking for. Um, it's never an easy process, mostly. And again, we ask Allah the Almighty to give you that which is good for you and that which is best for you and that which will be pleasing for you. I mean, and... That if you are not in a rush, then take your time being active. Meaning, not to just sit and wait till you're 30, but rather get out there and start looking and looking at the various avenues and I guess having sit downs and so on and so forth. Be active in seeking, but not active in compromising. Wassalamu alaikum wa Muhammad.